The mysterious death of a Saudi journalist, Jamal Khashoggi, has been a political and diplomatic firestorm over the past three weeks. But the journalist's death and unknown whereabouts has also had a huge impact on the art world. Columbia University cancelled an event with Saudi artist Ahmed Matar, who has ties with Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman and was helping to organize the New York Arab World Arts and Education Program. In addition to that, major cultural institutions in New York, including the Met and the Brooklyn Museum, announced their decision to block any donations coming from the kingdom. For more on the art scene's response to Khashoggi's death, I'm joined by Tier 2 World's editor-at-large, Craig Kapitas. Thank you so much for being with us, Craig. Hey. Now, we're so used to having you on Tier 2 World talk about, talking about money. You're the money guy. Um, but little do people know that you've had a background in arts and culture as well. And you're the perfect person to ask <laughs> how uh, Khashoggi's death is affecting the art world. Well, I think there's two ways you have to look at it. First of all, the big cultural institutions in the United States and elsewhere were feeding at the Saudi trough for many years, taking their money, in essence trying to promote the Saudi myth. And this is the big inconvenient truth. Now that is over. The problem that Saudi Arabia has now is Saudi Vision 2030. Because the money that Saudi needed to attract to put its young people to work needed to go to young people who were interested in the arts. That kind of money did not come from McKinsey or from Total or from a big oil company. It came from entrepreneurial ventures, whether they be in Silicon Valley or Hollywood. That money is now gone. And how much, how much of it is gone now? Or how many people have pulled back after this well, uh, incident took place? What we know is all of Silicon Valley has pulled back. The deals with Hollywood, those are gone. And this was, these were very, very important deals. You can't underestimate them. Some, some quick, you know, business, I've got to give you some statistics, and this really will illustrate. 70% um, of the adult population in Saudi Arabia works for the government. That means they're bureaucrats. They don't contribute anything. The Saudi Ministry of Labor says that 1.2 million jobs must be created by 2022 just to reverse the official unemployment rate of 12%, it's likely higher, down to an equally woeful 9%. When you start looking at young people out of work, the figures go way up. And when the consulting firms came in, for the Saudi government to find out what new sectors can we open up for young people. Well, it doesn't take a genius to figure out that McKinsey realized that the arts was a place that a lot of young people would like to try their hand at. Now that's gone. Well, tell me about it, uh, vice versa. How, uh, how much has the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia contributed to the art world? Well, they paid $450 million for Da Vinci's Salvador Mundi. Now we don't know where it is. It was supposedly gifted to uh, the Emirates. I think it was, uh, um, yeah, it was gifted to the Emirates. Uh, they buy a lot of art. They invest a lot of art. Well, they have a lot of petrochemical dollars. So they, they were able to make these investments and get close not only to museums and cultural institutions, but also universities who also enjoyed their largesse, the Saudi largesse. And again, this was part of this larger inconvenient truth that no one wanted to mention at polite cocktail parties because the money was flowing. And now Jamal Khashoggi assassinated here in Istanbul, apparently inside <coughs> the Saudi consulate, which is just a few miles up the road from where mm -hmm. we're sitting, this has changed the game plan, 100%. And do you think it's going to stay like this? Or do you think, you know, uh, relations over time will heal between Saudi Arabia and the art world? If you look at the art world as an economic engine, which I do, that entrepreneurs from the art world, whether they be in dance or film or music or digital, Saudi Arabia needed those experts from outside to come in and help recreate the Saudi economy for young people. The only things people know how to do in Saudi Arabia are be bureaucrats and petrochemical engineers. 
they have no management experience or skills in any of these other areas. So now, because of this assassination, the arts world, which is by definition liberal and concerned about these issues, they don't want the blood money. Mm -hmm. Now, real quick, um, Craig, <coughs> do you think that any institution or a certain individual will, will receive backlash um, from Saudi Arabia uh, at all after all these uh, actions have been taken towards them? No, not on the larger legacy uh, business deals that go on between uh, Saudi Arabia and the West. Arms, petrochemicals, there's too much money involved. That has to keep going. Uh, that's not cynical, that's real politic. Mm -hmm. That's a strategic decision. But again, this is really so important. That was never the raison d'etre for Saudi Vision 2030. Mm -hmm. Saudi Vision 2030 needed young American and Western entrepreneurs to come into the kingdom and help develop what we can largely call an arts industry. Mm -hmm. Those people are no Great longer Great jobs coming. for the younger generation. It, and exactly. And even the McKinsey reports and the other reports that were done by the consulting firms, they pointed out, if you're a 20, unemployed 20-something 20 in Saudi Arabia, any 20-year-old, they're going to be interested in the arts, right? Whether it's music, film, or whatever. Of course. Those opportunities are now gone. Unfortunately. Well, yes. Craig Kapitas, thank you so much for joining us on Showcase today to speak about um, Khashoggi's involvement in the art world and the impact it's had on the art world.